So we're looking at the energy carried by an electromagnetic wave or a bunch of electromagnetic waves. And when we're talking about energy, obviously we're talking about uh, measuring in joules. Um, energy, obviously measured in joules, is one of the more important concepts in physics. The rate at which energy flows through a particular point would be known as power. It's measured in watts or joules per second. So we can talk about not only how much energy a particular volume in space contains of electromagnetic energy, um, sometimes it's more useful to talk about the power, how much energy flows through an area per second, so watts. Finally, um, what we see with our eyes is more related to a concept known as intensity. And intensity is how much power per unit area does uh, do we receive from electromagnetic waves. So for instance, I'll give you um, an example on the surface of the earth in terms of sunlight, we get about one kilowatt for every square meter of uh, surface that the sunlight falls on if the uh, sunlight is normal to the surface. So <clears throat> we're gonna look at a few things here. We're gonna look at uh, something called the pointing vector, which is associated with intensity. And again, we need to remind ourselves of three different things here. Energy is measured in joules. Power is joules per second, that's watts. And finally, intensity is the concentration of power on a particular area. So, you know, watts per meter squared is intensity. That's going to be probably the most relevant unit for what we're going to talk about here. So um, taking a look at um, what is going on. I'm going to go forward right here. Just to remind you, um, electromagnetic waves are transverse waves. So they have a perpendicular electric field and magnetic field. They propagate at the speed of light. This is predicted by Maxwell's equations, where the speed of light is equal to one over the square root of mu, uh, mu naught times uh, epsilon naught, the permeability and permittivity of space. And um, again, you know, as the wave is moving, it's moving at three times 10 to the eight meters per second. The ratio of the electric field to magnetic field is uh, the speed of light. So this is the electric field, which is Newtons per Coulomb. Uh, the magnetic field is uh, the SI units there are Newtons. It's a little, that's a little complicated there. Newtons per meter per second per, per Coulomb. Um, there's, you can actually simplify that. But uh, in, in any case, with this ratio right here, we're going to use C to relate uh, intensity to the electric field and intensity to the magnetic field. That's where it's important here, even though your professor can't remember all the units involved. So <clears throat> let's look at something which is related to intensity, the pointing vector. Now, remember, energy, joules, power, watts, intensity, watts per meter squared. So the pointing vector has units of watts per meter squared, but like the electric and magnetic field, this thing is oscillating in intensity, okay? It is a vector, so it has direction. And of course, we just talked about the units, watts per meter squared. So just as the electric and magnetic field are oscillating, also this pointing vector is oscillating, okay? We can think about it in terms of, again, how the energy is flowing per time and how concentrated it is over a particular area. The pointing vector propagates in the direction that the light is traveling in, in, in at least in a vacuum. So um, if we look at the pointing vector and we just want the, the magnitude, um, we can simplify this a little bit. Going back, the pointing vector is equal to one over mu zero, uh, E cross B, because electric field and magnetic field are perpendicular, 
we can simplify the cross product to E times B sine theta. Theta here is 90 degrees. Sine of 90 degrees is just one. So the magnitude simplifies to just uh, one over mu zero E times B. Now, again, remember E over B is going to be equal to uh, C. So looking down here, um, we have the magnitude of the pointing vector. Again, it's pointing in the direction that the, the light is propagating is equal to one over C mu zero uh, E squared. Now, how did I get this? Well, what I did is I substituted in for B. B is equal to, if we think about this, E divided by C, okay? B is equal to E divided by C. So if I make that substitution here where I have E times E divided by C, I get E squared. And this now becomes the pointing vector. So if, if I know the electric field, I know the amount of energy flowing through a particular uh, surface per area. And, uh, you know, of course, that uh, is this expression right here. I can also substitute out for E. E is C times B. So if I replace C times B for my E, where I have C times B times B, I now get this expression right here. So this is very, very important because it gives us a way of relating the momentary intensity of the light with the electric field, the strength of the electric field, or the strength of the magnetic field, okay? So um, again, your maximum value for S or the maximum intensity uh, is going to be equal to one over C mu zero times uh, the, the amplitude of E, because the amplitude of E is a maximum value of E squared, you know, the amplitude squared, and likewise for B. So let's visualize what exactly is going on right here. Here we have E, here we have B. If we do the right-hand rule, where we take E cross B, we get, uh, <laughs> oh, I have my screen reversed. So what I'm doing is going, going to be reversed. But again, E cross B is gonna give us the direction of S. And again, we can imagine we, we have this light propagating through space and uh, it's going through some area A. If we want the power through A, we can take the um, magnitude of the pointing vector, S, divided by the area, and that'll give us how many watts of um, electromagnetic energy is going through there. And again, S represents the, ima the, the amount of watts per meter squared. Finally, um, these fluctuations happen very, very quickly. And, you know, even if we're talking about radio waves, uh, we are typically talking about in kilohertz or megahertz. So in the time scales that we're, we're typically measuring, even for the lowest frequency waves, you know, you get up to visible light where 10 to the four hertz, you know, the changes are happening so, so rapidly. Um, if we want the overall intensity just averaged out and we take the average pointing vector, we integrate over, you know, assuming that the, you know, it's behaving like a harmonic wave, we integrate over these sines and these cosines, you know, for a plane wave. We get the um, amplitude of the electric field times the amplitude of the magnetic field divided by two mu zero, okay? But again, it's sometimes easier to equate uh, the amplitude for the electric field to the intensity or the amplitude of the magnetic field to the intensity. And, you know, here you can clearly see um, in, uh, you know, these two, these two cases right here that uh, here is my expression containing the electric field and the electric field is, you know, can be expressed in, in volts per meter or here is intensity related to the magnetic field. And again, E divided by B equals C, and you can see that difference between the two right there. Remember, we're squaring uh, these two values. But, but roughly, 
when we look at something and we can we can you know think about light entering our eyes and as it goes through our pupils it's then focused on onto our retina um it is the intensity of the light that determines how bright something appears okay photons are coming in and they're stimulating nerve cells and to see something to appear to be bright we have to continually stimulate those nerve cells and you know as the chemical reactions take place in the eye as visual purples turn into visual yellow uh impulses go to the brain um we are detecting different levels of brightnesses based on intensity watts per meter square okay so once again you know the more intense the electric field is the brighter something is going to appear and of course the electric and magnetic field are connected so that's true for the magnetic field too okay let me erase all the ink on the slides um that's about it for intensity there is um, not much more to to really say about it you know other than um when we look at something we are not seeing the electric field we are not seeing the magnetic field we are seeing intensity because intensity is once again how concentrated the energy is you know per unit time okay what is flowing into our eyes what are we seeing